Hi guys, today I'm going to do a tutorial on a child portrait. This time it is going to be something different because it is going to be in real time. I'm doing this tutorial in real time because a lot of you people ask me to do a real time tutorial instead of the usual time lapse tutorials. So I'll try to explain what I'm doing and you can watch the drawing process in detail. It took me around 10 hours to finish this drawing so I cannot show you the whole process obviously. So I'll divide the process into several parts and will show you the important parts you need to know. So I'm going to do the part 1 of this tutorial today to show you how to draw the eye and skin. So coming to the art supplies I used for this drawing, there is some significant change from my usual supplies because I changed the paper to Canson Ultra Smooth Bristol. So I didn't have to use the baby oil or any other blending tools in this drawing. So these are the supplies I have used, Prismacolor Premier Pencils, Faber Castor Polychromos, an electric eraser and of course the Ultra Smooth Bristol from Canson. So I'm starting with her eye, I have zoomed in to get a closer look. As you can see the paper texture is super smooth. I usually prefer to use a paper with some texture to it but I want to try this smooth bristol because a lot of uh, color pencil artists use this as their primary paper. The end result is of course much smoother and more realistic but I hate to draw on a slippery surface like this. But that is a personal preference because some people like smooth surface instead. So I am currently using uh, indigo blue from Prismacolor. It is one of my favorite pencils to use because of its color intensity. I usually use it to draw really dark areas along with some reds like Tuscan red. But here I am using it to draw her deep blue eyes. Along with that I am using a dark green also to draw her iris. So I will share some tips for drawing a realistic eye. First of all you have to realize that eye is a spherical structure placed in a socket on the face and usually the light is falling from above and from in front. So a shadow will be formed over the upper edge throughout the eye including the white of the eye. So we have to darken them using dark colors. And I have seen people hesitating to put a dark grey or other dark colors on the white of the eye. That is completely wrong because if you leave the white of the eye as white you are never going to get a realistic result. Instead you will end up with a very flat looking eye. I always tell people that even the lightest object become dark or even black when there is not enough light. So that's about the white of the eye but what about the iris? Here things are a little bit different because iris is transparent. As usual there will be a dark shadow on the upper part but along with that there will be a small highlight due to the reflecting property of the iris. And when light is passing from above to below the lower part becomes very bright. If you can manage to do these value gradations correctly, you will end up with a beautiful eye. Here I have used indigo blue and dark green for the iris and now I am using black to draw the upper shadow I just told you about. I am using the same black pencil to draw the pupil too. Sometimes the highlights come just above the pupil partially covering the pupil. In that case you don't have to draw the complete circle of pupil. But here the highlight is just touching the pupil so I could draw the pupil completely.
I am now using an electric eraser to pull out some colors from the lower half of the iris because it was darker than what I was expecting and after using the eraser I will use the pencils again to blend those hard edges. Repeat the process until you get the best results. And one more thing you have to be aware of is like I said uh, the highlight is in the upper half surrounded by the dark shadows. Here you should be able to create an optimum contrast. You can leave the highlight as pure white and the shadows nearly as dark as black. Now coming to the white, I am using a warm grey 2 from Polychromos as a base layer. Then I will use a warm grey 5 for the shadow on the upper edge. I am not using a sharp point here but it is always better to use a sharp point especially when drawing a small area like this. So the eye part is over. But eye drawing is never complete without drawing lids and skin around the eyes. I have covered the most difficult part but I will talk to you about drawing the eyelids and surrounding skin along with the skin drawing part. So as you can see I have finished both her eyes and some part of her face. Now I am going to draw her left cheek. I chose this part for the tutorial because it is easy to understand and I am using all the pencils required for drawing the skin. Before that I just wanted to tell you something about the skin around the eyes. There are some points to remember when drawing the skin surrounding the eye. As you can see the upper eyelid and the skin between the eyebrow and eye is darker compared to the other areas because of the same reason I told you before. The light is coming from above and it creates a shadow on the upper part of the eye and because the eye socket is placed deeper than the forehead. The upper eyelid becomes a narrow area just above the eye and it is even darker. Lower lid is comparatively lighter. Here you may have to draw a double line just below the eye to indicate lower eyelid thickness. But in this drawing I just used a single line because of the small scale of the drawing. So you just have to use darker skin colors for these areas like raw umber. Now what I am doing is putting a base layer of light skin color. I am using a beach from Prismacolor. At this stage you don't have to look for a very smooth finish. You will make a lot of lines here and there. But as we add further layers it will disappear. Now I am using a flesh pink from Prismacolor as another layer. I am trying to put uh, pink more towards her upper cheek because the lower part is going to be dark so the pink won't show through anyway. The reason why I add pink color is very obvious. The skin tone is contributed by the underlying blood too so adding pink will enhance the realism. The effect is very subtle so don't use force to make it pure pink. We need only a touch of pink. When we add further layers the pink color may get uh, disappear but we can use pink again at any time but never add more pink than what is necessary you can use cross hatches or circular motions when you shade I usually combine all kinds of techniques
Now I am going to the next color in line, Raw Amber from Polychromos. Here one thing I forgot to mention is that you don't have to use the exact same colors I mentioned here. You just have to pick a color that is similar to this one. Just be sure not to use very yellowish or pinkish colors. I am being very careful here because the raw amber from Polychromos is very rich in pigments. So if I use more pressure it is going to ruin this drawing. When we draw a lot with these color pencils we will get to know the properties of each of these colors. So if you are sticking with a particular brand you will know the subtle qualities of each color. It is very helpful when drawing something like this. You can see that even at this stage there are several dots and lines on her cheek. But don't worry about that at this stage. I am using raw amber for the darker areas below. Since she is a small child, her cheek is going to be of a spherical shape. So it is very easy to shade once you know how to shade a sphere. The next color I'm using is Burnt Talker from Polychromos for the darker areas and for the darkest areas I'll use Terracotta from Prismacolor. I combine both Prismacolor and Polychromos most of the times because you will get to use more colors and they work well together in a single drawing. You may also notice that I am going over the areas again and again with previously used lighter colors. It helps to get rid of the lines we created before and the drawing becomes smoother. I haven't used heavy pressure at any point. You just have to use a light hand and slowly bring out the smooth gradations. So you just have to do is identify the value and color from the reference and draw using the most appropriate color from your box of colored pencils. So the part 1 of the tutorial ends here. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And you can ask me anything regarding drawing on my Facebook or Instagram. All the links are given below.